Macedon has been destroyed. Uh, the Egyptians took their final settlement. They took their time with it, but they got rid of them eventually. Egypt themselves is still only an island faction. Yeah, I can't imagine them actually landing and taking some land, but if they take some Seleucid territory then, you know, they could put the Seleucid Empire in second place, and every territory ta counts at this point is what I'm trying to say. Um, it's nearly done. Welcome to the sixth and final part of this Rome Total War AI only series. Yes, I know I said there was going to be seven parts. Um, I decided to put the final hundred turns into just one episode uh, because the AI slows down as the campaign goes on, so there's always less to say because the AI does less. Um, so, yeah, hopefully uh, we can still get a good episode out of this. Um, if I'm being honest, if, if we split this final hundred turns into two episodes, for adult, they wouldn't even reach ten minutes long each, I don't think. Uh, so, you know, this. I thought this was just a better way. Um, and yeah, the final episode. Here we are. Let's let's go. Oh, it's really not looking good for Dacia now. The Seleucid Empire took another one of their settlements from them. So now they've got they've got two settlements down here, which uh, should hold quite a while because they've got the troops. But then, you know, this settlement here is under siege, probably going to fall to the Romans. And then it's. Uh, this settlement all the way up here, which is, yeah, that's not going to do much for them. So I think that's the end of Dacia, or near enough. Well, that was just torture at that point. The British were surrounding the Spanish, just keeping them alive, waiting for their faction leader to die. Of course, Spain, they've lost all the leaders, and then they got hit by the regicide. Uh, rest in peace, Spain. They're gone. And it's exactly as I predicted, the Romans, they're now moving even further into Italy. They've taken Amretium. Uh, the former Julii capital, and we've got troops around Rome as well, so maybe they'll be taking that eventually. That would be good to see. And the German settlements are also falling to the Brutii. Yeah, of course, Seleucids have more settlements right now, so if it was to end right now, they would win. But the Brutii, they're catching up quick, and the Seleucids, they've got to keep on going, otherwise the Brutii are going to take over them in this final episode and take the win. It's as easy as that for the Brutii. They just have to surround the Germans and then they're closing the gaps now. Uh, Trier should fall, uh, the Turks, uh, of course, Scandinavia. I think actually the Germans are going to die before the Dacians, because at least Dacia still do have some soldiers and, you know, it's going to take quite a while for their enemies to actually reach their settlements, so they're going to survive longer than the Germans, I think. Armenia finally lost Susa. They're down now to their final settlement. I think they're going to hold until the end of the game, if I'm being honest. I think Armenia will survive, because, uh, you know, they've got a lot of troops here, and this is quite a difficult one to take, because um, how long it takes for Seleucids to bring their troops here. Well, if they destroy this army, you know, it's going to be about another 20 or 30 turns until they're able to bring another one, by which time Armenia would have rebuilt its defences. So I think, I think Armenia will survive up here in the top right of the map. Maybe not, but we'll see. I was about to say I forgot about this settlement here, but they don't lose that anyway. Uh, the Germans are still at three settlements left, but how, how many more turns? My guess is that they'll be gone by before it gets to 139 BC. That's my guess. But the British are fighting back. They've got Ar Arinium under siege, and they've also got Trier under siege as well. Um, as the Germans are falling, the British are still pushing. I think the British will eventually die. You know, it'd be like the Germans again. Uh, they've got a lot of troops, they're making a good push, but eventually, over time, the Brutii will come to dominate them. The Brutii have to make it quick though, because there's not long left, so they have to, they have to quickly clean up these British armies and make the move now, otherwise it might be too late, the, the Seleucids might get the win. Yeah, and the British just, just don't seem interested. They know the real threat, they know they don't have to waste soldiers on uh, this rebel settlement here right now, they need to stop the Brutii whilst they still can, otherwise it's gonna, it's gonna get very nasty for them on this front. They're gonna lose a lot of land. The third faction to die of this episode, Carthage. Macedon, Spain and Carthage were of course very weak as it was. It was just a matter of time and I think it was of course the regicide that killed them. They lost all the generals and that's it for them. The Germans have finally been destroyed. The Brutia yeah, took a little bit longer than I expected them to but they managed it. Well done to the Brutii for destroying the Germans. There's now, there's only four actual powers left now. The Brutii, the Scipii, the British and the Seleucid Empire. The Scipii are not going to win this. 
Um, these are just my guesses, of course. The British, they're not going to win this. The British just have to slow down the, the Brutii to the point, uh, to such a point where the Seleucids can build up and take the win. Uh, that's more their job. And the Scipii, their job is just to hold their line because if the, if the Seleucids break through and take all of Africa, then they will win. So yeah, it's like the British, they cannot win, but they're fighting. And if they do well on their front, the Seleucids win. And then similarly, Scipii, they, they're a big power, but a lot of it rests in their hands as well, because if they do bad, the Seleucids win. If they win, the brute, well, if they win on their front, the Brutii win over all. Um, just my prediction, of course, but yeah. However, I think this front is looking in favour of the Romans once they get their troops down from Germany over here. Yeah, I think they could... I think they could definitely do a lot. Okay, nothing's really happened in the last 30 turns, and when I say nothing really, I mean nothing at all has happened, um, territory-wise. Um, the Brutii and the British are fighting here in the Alps, and it's of course taking them a very long time to get through. Um, I actually think until the end of the game, this border here might be just one big stalemate. There's about 60 turns left, and because of how this is, if anyone's going to make it through, I guess it will be the British, but all oh, the brutalised armies back here. It's just going to be back and forth trying to push each other around. I don't think it's going to take about 100 turns to clean this up, I think. Um, of course, I'm still going to keep on going, obviously, but um, yeah, if, I'm showing you now in case if you're wondering why uh, nothing has happened for so long. And yeah, no one's actually pushing on to Dacia, they're just not doing anything. They're more just sitting on the border, as you can see here. This happens sometimes. This is, as you get further on, the AI becomes much more buggy. Um, you know, this is just something that always happens. Look, we're not even going for Armenia. And that's why my, you know, with my time lapses and these uh, campaigns, you never, you very rarely see just one winner. Because there always comes a point where everything just uh, kind of dies. Um, and nothing really happens. So of course people always ask for, you know, that next part or for me to go a few hundred more turns, but, you know, this is like 40 turns now uh, since I last uh, showed you the map and look, it's not, nothing's happening at this point. The AI gets stuck in these things. Uh, there's nothing I can do, um, but yeah. I just wanted to say something to uh, explain um, a bit more why, why all this stuff happens and yeah, I think this is a good example of um, a way how I could explain it by actually showing uh, what is going on. Olé! It's a miracle. Something happened. Um, a Seleucid uh, settlement rebelled and yeah, they lost it. Ah, oh, that's quite a strategic thought by the Brutii there. Ooh, we've got two of them. That's, that's nice. Right on the bridge. And after all that fighting in the Alps, uh, they sign a ceasefire. <laughs> Uh, the Brutii were actually looking desperate. It looked like the British were about to break through. Uh, war will start again in like one or two turns. Uh, that's how it always happens. They're like, the sign piece just for like a couple of turns at times. But AI yeah, is stupid. Um, especially the later on it gets. And yeah, it's like, look at this, they're already at war. War declared. And then in about three more turns, we've done the signing of the ceasefire. You know, just some interesting stuff about the AI when you get further into the campaign and why uh, stuff slows down a bit. I thought I might as well show you. And for those wondering why I put uh, two episodes uh, together into one final episode, uh, why I made that deci decision, I think uh, this final episode explains why. Um, of course, um, just going back into the episode, the Seleucid Empire took, of course, uh, this settlement back, uh, but they're not making a move onto Dacia. Armenia is holding out because the Seleucid Empire is just wanting to hold a bridge. And it seems like uh, the CPI will be able to take Palmer. Uh, but no one's yet uh, going for Numantia here in Spain. Ah, good, something's finally happening. Uh, Armenia managed to take Campus Solani. But, you know, uh, the Seleucid Empire, they might struggle to find some troops to spare to take the settlement back. Uh, <laughs> no, they're, they're going to destroy them. This is what An uh, Armenia has, this is what the Seleucid Empire has. <laughs> Good luck Armenia, Good luck. And for an update on the Britain-Roman border, 
You know, it's, it's still exactly the same thing. Nothing's done to happen, I don't think. Okay, it does seem like the Seleucid Empire is struggling a little bit. Um, well, not struggling, but they're not sending their troops, sorry. They're retreating all the way back for whatever reason. Daisy has a... I guess one full stack here if uh, you know, this poor brute I am is just completely surrounded. <laughs> are they at war? Hold on. Um, yeah, they are at war, so he should be able to fight his way through. I don't know what's going on here, but I don't want to know what's going on there. But Dacia and Armenia, I think, will survive to the end of the game, just because the AI is being stupid at this point. We have made it to the final 10 turns. Only 10 turns remain and I'm don't, going to check for stats. Now first of all, does anyone have anyone as a vassal? Nope. Okay, let's take a look. Okay, so these are the top 5 factions in terms of territory and the Brutii yeah, are leading with 31 settlements. Uh, and sadly the, the Seleucid Empire is down now to about yeah, 27 settlements. So we're at, at 28 at one point, I think that is. Um, yeah, so right now, the Brutii would win, but if the Seleucid Empire... Ah, oh, they're not doing it. I was going to say, if they would take back this settlement here, then take this settlement back for one side, maybe just take one more settlement somewhere, um, then they could actually win. If the British start taking some settlements off the Brutii, or the Brutii lose settlements any other way, the Seleucid Empire could win, so it's still very close. On top of this, if the Seleucid Empire decides to vassalize either D Dacia and Armenia, which could happen, or Egypt, then that will give them the extra settlements and put them in the lead. So it's not over yet. It probably is. The Brutii is 99% probably going to win, but the Seleucids they can still do it. It's, it's not as far as you'd think. It's only like three settlements, two or three settlements difference. And a couple of vassals or a couple of rebel settlements to uh, that fall could do it. Really? This happens now? The Scipii take Cordoba from the British. They finally managed to figure out how to cross this bit of water here. And now they're of course going to uh, sweep up into southern Spain. This makes it easier for the Brutii because now the British will pull some soldiers back. But at this point there's only like three or four turns left. Uh, Two turns per year, if you wanted to know. So yeah, I think it's too late for really anything at this point. 100 BC. Welcome to the end of this AI-only campaign for Rome Total War. Now I'm going to just quickly check for diplomacy and the stats, um, and all of that stuff. So, as we can see here, this is how it ended. Uh, no one had any vassals, so yeah, I think... I think... Um, the Brutii I have won. Overall, they are leading. Uh, these are all the surviving factions, by the way. And then... Territory. Here we are. The Brutii with about 31 settlements. Uh, the Seleucid Empire with about 27 or 28 settlements. It's always difficult to tell, as I always say, but I do my best. Of course, Britain with about 21 settlements, possibly 20 settlements. 21, I'd say. Uh, the Scipii at the end had uh, 14 settlements roughly, and then you can see the rest there. Well done for the Brutii for getting the win, um, even though the Seleucid Empire was leading for so long, uh, but everything just collapsed at the end. And even if the AI did play properly um, as it went on, I think the Brutii would have still won. They have taken so much territory off the British, I think. A couple of honourable mentions, I guess. Uh, well done to the British for being able to take all of modern France, um, Iberia, and even take Rome at one point, controlling the majority of um, Italy. Yeah, taking Rome was very impressive by them. Really unexpected as well for the British. Well done to Armenia for building the largest empire I've ever seen them make. Um, yeah, that was really impressive. It was sad to see it fall. I really wanted to see them keep on going, but, you know, this it happens at times, and, yeah, sadly, Armenia did not win. They ended with two settlements, so they had quite a good end, though, by taking this last settlement here. You know, if, if the Seleucids could hold on to this settlement, uh, this settlement, um, and if they held on to this settlement, you know, it, it could have been a different story. They might have been able to vassalize Dacia or Armenia. So, Armenia did play its own big role in this. 
Well done, of course, to the Seleucid Empire. Uh, they did really well in this campaign. Um, the AI plays differently, slightly, when it's an AI only. Uh, that's why we sometimes see stuff like the Seleucid Empire do well, uh, because their AI doesn't always go for them the way they should. Um, and we see other stuff like the Papal States in Medieval 2 Total War being super overpowered, uh, so I actually have to mod them to make them weaker. Stuff like that happens uh, it, when it's AI only. Um, it's, you know, I'm, well, most of us are probably used to it at this point, uh, from if you do watch my videos. Uh, the Skip AI, well done to them, although you know, they had quite a normal campaign really. They just take Africa, Sicily, and that's about it. Please do subscribe if you want to see more videos of mine. Uh, yes, there will be a new series coming to replace this one, uh, now that this one's over with. Uh, there'll also be a time lapse of this as well. Um, I do time lapses for other stuff. Uh, so yeah, please do share uh, the video as well. Uh, the series actually, if you know anyone who would be interested um, in this, it really helps me out. And also please do feel free to subscribe if you want to see more stuff, whether it's AI only battles, campaigns, Let's plays, time lapses or whatever it is I'm, I'm doing. Goodbye.